All right, so let a and b be real numbers. We're gonna prove that the absolute value of a times b is equal to the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b. So as a refresher, we know the absolute value of x is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to zero, and it's equal to negative x if x is less than zero, okay? So this is gonna be broken up into six cases. So let's go ahead and start the proof. Case one is gonna be if A is zero, and it doesn't matter what B is. So we have the absolute value of A times B is equal to the absolute value of zero times B, which is equal to the absolute value of zero, which is zero, which is equal to the absolute value of zero times the absolute value of B, which of course is the absolute value of A times the absolute value of B. So we have that the absolute value of A times B is equal to the absolute value of A times the absolute value of B when A is zero. Let's go ahead and do case number two. We'll have that B is zero, and it's the same argument as above. So we'll have the absolute value of AB is equal to the absolute value of A times zero, which is equal to the absolute value of zero, which is equal to zero, which is equal to the absolute value of A times the absolute value of zero, which is equal to the absolute value of A times the absolute value of B. Now, we're gonna do um, a little bit more interesting cases. So case uh, three, we're gonna have that A is bigger than zero and B is bigger than zero, okay? So we'll have the absolute value of AB. So if A is bigger than zero and B is bigger than zero, that means A times B is gonna be bigger than zero so the absolute value of AB will just be AB because we know that the inside is positive, so it's gonna spit out the positive, right? And since A is bigger than zero, right? We know that um, since A is bigger than zero, A would equal the absolute value of A, and since B is bigger than zero, we know um, B would equal the absolute value of B. So this is equal to the absolute value of A times the absolute value of B. Right, so we have absolute value of AB is equal to absolute value of A times absolute value of B. Now, case number four, we have A is less than zero and B is less than zero. Okay. So we have the absolute value of AB. So if A is less than zero and B is less than zero, then A times B will be positive, right? and the absolute value of this positive number will be just a times b. But if we have a is less than zero, then we have, we have to have negative a would equal the absolute value of a. But that's not a problem here because we can rewrite this as negative a times negative b, right? We know that um, negative a times negative b is the same thing as a times b. And since a is less than zero, the absolute um, negative a would equal the absolute value of a. And since b is less than zero, we know that uh, negative b would be the absolute value of b. So we still get the absolute value of a times b is equal to the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b. Now case number five, we're gonna have a is bigger than zero and b is less than zero. So we'll have AB is equal to, so if A is bigger than zero and B is less than zero, we know that the absolute, we know that A times B will be less than zero. So the absolute value of something less than zero is negative that thing, right? Well, we know we want negative B, so we'll we can rewrite this as um, A times negative B because if a is bigger than zero, then a is equal to the absolute value of a. And if b is less than zero, then we know that negative b is equal to the absolute value of b. So we still get absolute value of a b is equal to the absolute value of a times absolute value of b. Okay, so last case. We have um, a is less than zero and b is bigger than zero. So we'll have absolute value of AB. We know that the inside here is going to be negative because a negative times a positive is negative. So this will be negative AB. 
Same argument as above here. We can rewrite this as negative a times b because we know that if a is less than zero, then negative a will be the absolute value of a. And if b is bigger than zero, then b is equal to absolute value of b. So we still get absolute value of a, b is equal to the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b. And we proved it for all possible cases of a and b, right? When a was zero, b was zero, when both were bigger than zero, when both were less than zero, when one was bigger than zero and one was less than zero, and the other was less than zero and the other and the other was bigger than zero. So we've shown it for all cases. So we've proven, so in all cases, the absolute value of a, b, is equal to the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b. And that is the proof.